What is this magic? Sisters! There's magic! possessed most powerful of all, which is <laughs> Indiana Jones. <laughs> and we are here to do our crafts. <laughs> so, come, come, call them, call to the children. Oh, call to them, so come, little children, I'll take you away into a land of enchantment. Come, little children, the time's come to play. Here in my garden of man. Woo! I need her book. Yes. Oh, my little girl. Yes. Oh, yes. And there we have the book. And we shall open up and see. Oh, what crafts shall we make today? Oh, something to decorate our home. Yes. We shall be right back. Go, go, find the things that we need. Oh, go, oh, yes, yes, go, yes, yes, go. Yes, yes, yes. go. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> now we shall do something to make the home festive for all Hallow's Eve. And we need, darling Sarah, we need something from the garbage. Oh. We need a bottle. Did you find it? Is that a bottle? There was a boy inside. There was a boy inside. But he escaped. Oh. oh. I usually oh. this has soda in it. It's two mm. liters, I understand. <laughs> two liters. Yes. Okay, we have a bottle. Next, we need a dead crow. Look what I found! Woo. It's lunch! Oh, 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 oh. oh well, we'll make it into a decoration. Now kill it! It's dead! <laughs> <laughs> now, you shall see the magic. So this is from a place called Dollar Tree. Ooh. It's where dollars fall. <gasps> the tree of dollars! Mm. So you shall put that little one there. And then I have some moss. Some deathly moss. <laughs> and then we have this plastic bottle and a sharp implement. So we take the sharp implement and we find where we had made the hole before because it's easier that way. And I found it. Oh, good. <laughs> so we cut. We cut. Ooh, I can cut. Okay, yes, please. We don't want blood. <laughs> this does no. not call for blood. <laughs> 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 oh, well, this is being difficult. Ah, there we go. Now I push it. Yes, do your magic, Sarah. Do your magic. Ooh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now usually you would take. Oh, look at that! Now usually you would take all this nasty bookiness off with something called glue on, or goo gone, or anything goof else. Off. Goof off anything, or just like <laughs> keep like I don't know, messing with it. But we don't have time for that because we have magic. All so nice fast. and clean. And then you put a cork on it. Oh. <laughs> What's a cork in it? Yeah. Because you know, there's some people that need I to put know. a cork in it. So you I put a cork too. in it, and then you get this this stuff called a raffia. And raffia. you just throw it all around. And then you throw it because this is magical. And then you take this and look, we have a wicked stand, a black wicked Ooh. stand. And if you want to learn how to make this stand for your own, from the Tree of Dollars <laughs> to go to my Mad Lab Scientist episode and you shall see it. So, yes. go sister, yes. go ahead, put some moss, put some moss in there, just Ooh. spread it around. <laughs> and you shall take the dead crow and put it in the middle. Oh, Ooh. my lunch. You shall put it in the middle. <laughs> and you shall see, you could buy this anywhere for tens, 
and twenties of dollars. But we don't have that money because no. we're poor witches. And then you just <laughs> and then you enclose oh. him. And you can use it you can see how glorious. Ooh. Or you could use like a small skeleton or oh. or a tree with bats. Anything you like, and you have your own little bell jar. <laughs> oh, but wait! We don't like refuse. So what shall we do? Oh, dear sister, I need an iron. Can you go fetch me an iron? Okay. Fetch me an iron, and you shall see what I do with this for thee. Ah, oh, I right. The iron is not hot, but were it hot, this, this, this is a torture weapon. Yes, it is a tool of torture for housewives. <laughs> we don't care about wrinkles in the old times. Anyway, you take this and then you melt it. You just put some aluminum foil first and you just let it melt little by little, little by little with the heat, low heat. And then once it's done, take this and watch. We make a little cauldron and we paint the cauldron. Isn't that Ooh. lovely? And we can put a little so rood and bodies Ooh, and, and give it to the children and boys and spiders. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, my friends. A quick little craft mm. that anyone can do. Even in a fool like Sarah. Oh. <laughs> She's not that bright. And if she could do it, you can do it too. I'm bright. Well enough. Bright enough, yes, <laughs> let's leave it to that. Mm. Now well, that was fun, but there is more crafts to be done for Hocus Pocus. So here I am going to create a mini magic cauldron. And this is such a fun little craft to do. I really love it because number one, it uses the uh, technique of the floating teacup. And you all know I love making floating teacups, but now they're going to be floating potion bottles. And if you want something that's cute and adorable for your tiered tray, you yeah, can't go wrong with floating potion bottles. So I took a candle that looked very much like a cauldron and this I got from the Dollar Tree. I painted it with flat black spray paints outside, just two coats. And now I stuffed it with um, styrofoam. That's basically it. Just some foam from Dollar Tree, floral foam from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm creating the wires that are going to support my little magic potion bottles. And all I'm using is the wire that you get from the Dollar Tree and twisting it, twisting it in two, unless you have a heavier gauge wire, but I just use what I have. Um, you'll notice in my video, I am going to be very resourceful and only use what I already have on hand. And um, yes, so here I am twisting it in two so that it'll be a little heavier. Now I'm taking those little mini bottles that you can get at Dollar Tree. And these look like little mason jars. I love them. And I painted the inside with a little bit of glitter first and then some paint on top of that. So you can see the glitter on the outer cover, I guess, on the out outer shell. And now all I'm going to do is add some hot glue. And to the hot glue, I'm going to add my wire. Be careful, it's glass. It gets really hot with the hot glue in there. And uh, all I did was, there you go. I secured the wire in there with the hot glue and just continue to add more and more glue. This is going to take a lot of patience. I let the glue set and then I started dripping the potion out. And basically all I'm doing is covering the potion or covering the potion, <laughs> covering the wire with glue to make it look like potion is pouring out. Now you have to have patience with this because you have to do it in steps simply because you want to build up on the glue. If not, it's just going to be one strand and you're going to be able to see that wire. But if you go over it again and again and again, and now I secured it to the styrofoam, it will start creating these drips and drops and it's just perfect because it does look like potion is just pouring out of this jar. And again, this is a, a jar. You can use little jars. You can use little potion bottles that they have at the Dollar Tree. You can use little plastic bottles. I did this last year as well live and I actually made it a little larger. It was a little larger size cauldron, like a little life size cauldron. And uh, But I actually liked the little mini one for my tiered tray. And I know there's a tiered tray uh, challenge coming up soon, so I might want to use that for that. When the glue has set and dried and cooled off, then you're going to paint it. I am using Plaid FX paint. I've used this in the past. The reason I like Plaid FX paint is because it is a flexible acrylic paint and it is absolutely perfect for things like plastic and foam 
and it just works really well. It's also flexible, so if you were to create this or paint something on jeans or, or that EVA foam that I use, it's flexible and it will not crack. Now I'm doing the same thing here once again, building up, and I just wanted to give you a closer look at how you just slowly build up these drippings that will eventually become potion. Now for that little paint bottle, there you see it, uh, close and personal. For the orange, I actually used plaid, another plaid product, which is folk art, and it's folk art uh, color shift. And it is absolutely beautiful because it's not a metallic, it's not a pearl, it literally shifts color and it really makes a really nice magical effect. For my last jar, I thought I would use some purple glitter because I'm trying to use the three colors of green, orange, and purple. So in there, I was just adding some folk art um, glitter paint. There was some glitter paint, but I thought the real glitter was necessitated. Yes, real glitter is necessary. And for Christmas, guys, I hate to say it, real glitter will be used instead of just the paint on glitter. I, you know, I've tried to avoid it, but it, it's kind of tough. So this is what all three bottles look like. The, the last bottle, because it's a little longer, was a little wobbly. So I was just trying to secure it with some more hot glue. And it just, oh my gosh, when these drippings just drip down. Look at the green one. Look how cool that looks with the drips just dripping down. These little magic potions. I don't know if I'm going to use this on my tear tray at home or take it into work. Because this is such a cute little work um, decor idea that you can have it on your desk and you can have a few little hocus pocus signs and you can make a little hocus pocus desk set and here i am adding some more of that paintable gl glitter but eventually again i resort to real glitter so i just paint it and then uh, pour the real purple glitter on top i really enjoyed making this this was my favorite craft of today's crafts simply because i don't know I had a little bit of a little touch of magic a little touch of magic of those you know those bottles just being suspended in air it is really cute when you know people take a look and they're like oh what a cute idea like they figure it out you know but it's still they're like oh that's such a cute idea and again it's all in how you paint it up i did add some drippings on the outside of the cauldron as well and you can make like a little mini fire like a little oh it's so cute you can make a little mini fire and put you know uh, uh, one of those um tea lights that you get in the dollar tree battery operated tea lights and just put it underneath like some sticks and stuff and some stones and it just looks adorable once again so i hope you enjoyed watching me make my little mini cauldron and i hope you try to make this yourself at home to bring a little bit of hocus pocus magic right to your little office space this video is part of a collaboration with some other crafty witches devin the freckled mom diy and diy from house to home ellie they are both lovely friends of mine, and I am joined by many wonderful crafters in this playlist, so check it out for some more Hocus Pocus fun. Magic! The brought us back only works tonight on All Hallows' Eve. When the sun comes up, we have dust. Dust? Toast! Toast? Pudding! <laughs> Fortunately, the potion I brewed the night we were hanged would keep us alive and young forever. <sighs> Unfortunately, the recipe for that potion is in my spellbook, and the little wretches have stolen it. Therefore, it stands to reason, does it not, sisters dear, that we must find the book, brew the potion, and suck the lives out of the children of Salem before sunrise? Otherwise, it's curtains. We evaporate. We cease to exist. Dost thou come? Well, you explained it beautifully, Winnie. The way you started, started out with the adventure part, and then you sort of slowly... Explain went what? Come! We fly! Next, my friends, I'm going to make a Hocus Pocus sign uh, double, I guess. And I'm using my Cricut Joy, and it was given to me by my sweet friend, Pam. Thank you enough for all your kindness throughout this year. Now, I have to tell you, I did video while I was using the actual Cricut. And I, I, I got a snag. It, it was a snafu. I had issues with my computer. And then there was a snafu with the actual cutting. And the material got all bunched up. And oh, it was just, oh lord, it was such a nightmare. I almost completely gave up. 
but I kept moving forward. See, these were the extra letters that I had to make, which was a C and then H. And then you're like, well, Annie, you've got to use transfer tape. Well, guess what? It was 11 o'clock at night. I didn't care. I was like, it's Halloween. It doesn't have to be perfect. It could be messy. It could be off kilter. That's fine. That's what Halloween is all about. So the only thing I'm going to tell you, whenever you do anything with a hocus pocus, make your C your center. Center your C and everything will fall into place. That's all I'm going to say. Because that's what I did here. I just centered my C. Look, no transfer tape. No transfer tape. Not only that, but I don't know why. It just wouldn't... I, I couldn't get it to print like all in one line together. I still got to learn a lot. I got to learn a lot about using the Cricut. So that's why I haven't used it a lot because I have to like sit and learn, literally sit and learn. So, you know, the, the, this time, the, 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 that's all folks. <laughs> Yeesh. So this time, like right before Christmas and all that stuff, like the whole month of November, I'm going to, what is, wait, Hocus Pocus, get my camera to focus. What the heck is going on there? I'm sorry. It looks it looks awful. I'm sorry. But hey, just keep going forward. But yeah, this time before like Thanksgiving and stuff like that, I know we're all going to be crafting for Christmas. I get it. But I'm going to try to focus focus my camera maybe on on creating more stuff with my Cricut. Oh, look. Another glorious morning makes me sick so since I decided to use a little cauldron at my office this year I thought I thought it would be cool to decorate my office I decided to make myself a little wreath for my front door because somebody brilliant at work thought that it would be a cute idea to either have a contest for you know best costume for you know October 29th our last day at work before Halloween or dress up your door in your office so you know <sighs> I don't know who came up with that, right? <laughs> I just gave the option so that people, I, yeah, yeah, it was me. I gave people the option so if they didn't want to dress up, they can dress up their door. But seeing as I'm like the hostess or, or whatever, I thought I should dress up my door. So I picked Hocus Pocus as my theme. So I decided I was going to make a little wreath. And what I'm using here is one of those stovetop covers, those burner covers, which are great from the Dollar Tree for a lot of different projects. And this image that I found online, uh, it's probably not, it's probably copyrighted, so I can't sell it or anything like that. But since I'm just using it for my own use, who cares, right? So here I'm using my black mesh for my mesh wreath. And I'm using that black wreath form that they came out with at Dollar Tree. I thought that was such a phenomenal idea. They now have golden wreath, wire wreath forms. Again, another phenomenal idea. So what I'm doing is I'm bunching it up as though I was making a bow. And it's it's literally going to look like a whole bunch of bows. Um, there you go, see? It looks like a whole bunch of bows. Um, just stacked on top of each other. And that's going to make the mesh wreath. I have to admit, I did not calculate how much wreath mesh I was going to use and I kind of ran out and I think three rolls of the mesh would be perfect and I'm just trying to use the materials I already have and not purchase any more for Halloween but to use my budget towards Christmas items so that's how I finished it off there's a big gap at the top but we're going to take care of that don't worry about it and then I'm going to add some orange wreath mesh mesh yeah to the wreath and uh, I did want to add some green and purple. I did not have green and purple mesh, but I got around that as well. And you will see that in the final reveal. Um, I, I just, you know, I just thought it would be fun to have this. I'm going to add some, there, I, I need to add some more ribbons and bows, but at least I got to start. So now I had these little brooms. I always wanted to make one of those, oh, you know, park your broom here kind of signs. Didn't get around to it. So I'm just going to use the, the wreath, the wreath. <laughs> the brooms for my wreath and I'm painting in the three different colors green purple and orange just as I did for my little baby cauldron my baby cauldron my desk ca cauldron you know everybody needs to have a little desk cauldron and uh, so all I'm doing is just painting them they come in different colors I think they come in orange and purple I didn't see them in green so I just got a set of the three lightest colors one I think was the purple and I'm just covering them with the colors of orange and green as well and that's it now you'll check out the final reveal
This video is part of a collaboration with some other crafty witches, Devin the Freckled Mom DIY and DIY from House to Home Ellie. They are both lovely friends of mine and I am joined by many wonderful crafters in this playlist, so check it out for some more Hocus Pocus fun. Hi guys, so guess what I decided I was going to do? I was going to teach you how I do my makeup for Winifred Sanderson, yes, of course, who else? Hey guys, I decided to do a voiceover for this part because, well, just to make it shorter. So what I'm using here, yes, I'm using a glue stick, believe it or not. I'm using a glue stick to glue down my my eyebrows because, you know, Winifred doesn't have any eyebrows. And I would not suggest that you shave your eyebrows, don't do that. I am just gluing down my eyebrows. Um, this is before I've used any kind of foundation or anything else because I'm going to use concealer and everything on my eyebrows. I also wanted to say that I'm using this aqua, um, I guess, I don't know what it's called, primer? Yeah, I guess it's called a primer. And just put it all over your face. Boom, 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 all over your face. Next, I'm going to use concealer under my eyes, obviously, because look at the bags under my eyes from crafting at night. <laughs> Crafting at night. And um, yes, you're going to use concealer under your eyes and you're also going to use it on your eyebrows. Yes, that's what's going to help cover your eyebrows. So unless you want to buy the, you know, the prosthetics th things to actually cover your eyebrows, this is your best alternative and you can do it with stuff that you have at home already. Now I don't do contour or anything else. I just went ahead and put in my foundation. What the heck is that face? Anyway, my, I froze my face is frozen so i guess i was having issues with my like laptop recording but uh yeah oh here we go so i'm pat 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 patting on top of it because the glue is dry now we have to wait until the glue is dry and then you just pat 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 on top with your foundation there were some flakes and i just removed some of the flakes and recovered it again with the concealer just but you can see it's it's got a good effect and then just you know make sure you continue to cover up with your foundation so it pretty much matches yes i know you can see the eyebrows but it's it's better than actually seeing the eyebrows or shaving them so that's i i like this alternative now i'm adding like an orangey brown eyeshadow around my eyes because i recall she had some kind of like neutral color and that's what i'm adding here is just a little bit of orangey brown Next are Winifred's lips. Remember she has those like weird lips like the Queen of Hearts kind of look where it's like a partial, just like a heart around your lips in the middle, just in the very, very middle. I guess that's how they used to wear it back in the, I don't know, 17th century, I would say. 17? 16? 17? 18? I don't know. Um, that time, you know, the witch time. And all I'm doing here is, again, covering the corners with concealer so you don't see the full lips. You just see the middle and um, I just used eyeliner eyeliner I just used lip liner now I'm just using a little bit of eyeliner on the corners just in the corners um, she didn't have a lot of makeup on her eyes but just to make my eyes pop a little bit and just to outline them a little and then a little bit of the lipstick right on the cheeks because that's how that was her makeup schedule I guess and that's it now So to finish up my Winifred Sanderson look, I just need a few more accessories and a few little touches and I should be ready to go. So I'll be right back. <laughs> what is this? Sisters! <laughs> so what do you think? There you have it. Winifred Sanderson all ready for a Hocus Pocus Halloween. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'm sorry if it seemed that I was rushing through my projects, but I was. I'm sorry. It's been one of those crazy weeks. You know how it is. But I hope you enjoyed it anyway, and I hope you come back for more. As I always like to say, oh, before I say goodbye, I want to thank the hostess and co-hostess of this challenge, the Hocus Pocus Challenge, and all those who participated. And thanks to you for watching. And stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you, and remember to live the adventure. <laughs> Another glorious morning. Makes me sick. <laughs> See you again soon. <laughs> <laughs>